Let's talk Madden 22 gameplay. Now over the past week we found out a good amount of stuff about Madden 22 but most of it pertains to franchise mode and some other features but we haven't heard anything about gameplay yet and every day I keep getting asked well what is the game playing like so today I'm going to give you my hands on impressions after playing the game for an entire week kind of let you know what's good what's bad where the game's going now also keep in mind the entire next week EA is going to dive deep into gameplay they're going to show new footage trailers they're going to also talk about all the new things coming the things that they fixed bunch of information about gameplay next week so if you don't don't want to miss any of that make sure you subscribe and turn the bell icon on so you don't miss any of those videos when they go live so let's get into the madden 22 gameplay breakdown keep in mind this is the next gen version of the game because that is what the beta is being played on we haven't heard anything about current gen yet current gen will be changing from madden 21 to some extent we'll hear more about that potentially next week but for right now we're going to focus on next gen because that's kind of the main focus and that's what we've played so first i'm going to start with the pre-game really quickly and then we'll lead into the actual gameplay so i will say this is probably the best that the pregame has looked in a long time it definitely is repetitive though after you see it a few times you kind of feel like you've seen it all but as a total package it's the best pregame that i think they've actually put in the game for a while so you'll have the qb walking out from the tunnel you've seen this in the trailers then you'll see the fly over when it's an open stadium you'll see the flag on the field for the national anthem then after that you do get some different scenes here or there they're not too many different ones but you will see like sometimes different things with the crowd you'll see players warming up on the field which I liked I really loved that about the old games when they would show more of the stuff on field so you'll see the running back taking the handoff you'll see quarterbacks throwing the ball receivers catching the ball defenders maybe doing a drill you got some different scenes there I think it's it's what I like to see personally then you will also see uh, some next gen stats incorporated which I think is cool typically from what I've seen it's usually just a QB comparison they'll show different next gen stats associated with each quarterback I think that that's something they can really build out maybe show more positions amount of stats that's they show potentially and of course in the future I think even adding stuff like interviewers on the sideline and stuff like that could make the pregame better but it is repetitive but it's the best looking pregame that they've put in a while so I will say that so next let's talk about the home field advantage and like momentum stuff and then we'll get into the actual gameplay so one thing I noticed that I don't feel like they've mentioned yet is there's something called a game day factor and it's unique to every game and this affects both teams so for example the game day factor could be called well rested and that would mean that both both teams will fatigue slower. I guess both teams are well rested. Maybe they're on a typical week or whatever. Sometimes the weather can affect the game day factor. Sometimes you can have multiple game day factors. I've seen game day factors where it says, you know, injuries are more likely because of the turf that they're playing on and stuff like that. So every game has its own unique game day factor, sometimes multiple, which I found interesting and definitely pretty authentic, definitely based on the situations. Next, you've got home field advantage and momentum. So home field advantage for the home team, they start with this at the beginning of the game that was something that I misunderstood I thought this is something you had to earn with the momentum but no you actually start with your home field advantage now you can lose your home field advantage if you start playing bad but you start with it by default and let's just say if you're playing good the whole game and you're not really letting momentum swing too much you will keep your home field advantage all game and these home field advantages are unique to each team now the momentum can affect both teams even the away team so when you go into a game each team is going to have two momentum M factors which are like abilities for the team now they're going to be the same for both teams so if the home team keeps increasing their momentum not only is their home field advantage going to stay active but they're going to get some of these other boosts as well however if the away team starts just playing much better you know getting a pick six or something shifting momentum crazy in their favor then the home field advantage is going to go away and the momentum is going to shift to their side and then their M factors will actually activate and it'll make it tougher on the home team so both teams do have momentum advantages it's just that the home team does get that extra boost to start out with and it definitely is probably the best boost mo more times than not so just something to be aware of it's way too easy to get hacked on the internet these days there's too many unsecured networks and people are letting their sensitive data get into the hands of the wrong people that's why I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, ExpressVPN, which is an app that will allow you to funnel through a secure encrypted tunnel, which makes it more difficult for you to get hacked. You can connect to ExpressVPN with one easy click and use up to five different devices simultaneously. What ExpressVPN does is encrypts 100% of your network data, so whenever you're on an unsecured network, you won't be able to get hacked by other users who are also on that same network. Another great thing about ExpressVPN is it allows you to change your online location so that you can unlock content from other regions, which is what I use it for. 
So let's say you wanted to watch Rick and Morty on Netflix. Well, it's not available on the American Netflix. However, if you connect with ExpressVPN to the UK server, now you can unlock Rick and Morty on Netflix that way. And this works for a ton of other shows and movies as well. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash wayweather or clicking the link below in the description. Now, let's talk about the actual gameplay. So the first thing to note is the QB scramble is definitely back for all quarterbacks. The past couple years, it's been noticeable that if you didn't have the escape artist ability, it felt like you couldn't scramble with the QB even when he was fast, which was one of the worst things they did to the game. This year, the QB scramble is definitely back. Even guys that aren't crazy fast still feel fast. And I think that's because we're just used to them feeling so slow over the past couple years. But escape artist definitely does help. It gives you that little acceleration boost. But if you have a fast QB and he doesn't have escape artist, he's going to still feel fast this year. And to go along with this, I feel like the QB contains are very hit or miss. Sometimes they contain very well. Sometimes they don't. So I do think this could be a bigger year for scrambling QBs. That is definitely a notable change to the game. Jumping into the passing aspect of the game. So I don't really mind the passing too much. I definitely think ball trajectory seems better. It seems like they've been incrementally making that a little bit better each year. I do feel like there's a lot more situations where I can really hang the ball up in the air and kind of drop it into a certain spot. But I will say that passing is still very slow for QBs. The releases still feel slower like they did for Madden 21. It seems like that's the direction they're going where the releases might be more realistic. Same for the player movement. It's slower and more realistic, but it's not always the best for gameplay. So I still think Gunslinger as an ability is going to be something people are going to want to use this year because Gunslinger is just going to give you the release that we're used to having in Madden. And that allows you to fit balls into tighter windows to make throws that you otherwise can't make. So not having Gunslinger is going to put you at a disadvantage just off top whereas in the past gunslinger would give you a little bit of an advantage but it wasn't like a huge gap now that gunslinger advantage is a huge gap which is probably how it should be to be fair so in the regular rosters right now only Aaron Rodgers has this that could change because they have not updated the abilities in the beta but if you're playing ultimate team I think a lot of people are going to opt for the gunslinger ability because the passing releases are definitely so kind of slow a good thing though is the throw out a sack animation while it's still there it's happening a lot less and people hated that about 21 it definitely can still happen but it's definitely happening a lot less which is a good thing now, player movement and running overall definitely feels a little smoother. I will say, though, if you've played Madden 21 Next Gen, very, 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 very similar to Madden 22 Next Gen. There's not a lot of noticeable differences. Yes, the running's a little bit smoother, but it should be. They should, that, that should be something that happens every year. The movement should get better. It should get smoother. The animation should get better. That's just kind of just common. That's supposed to happen. But is it just a drastically different game? No, it's still the same Madden you know, and I, I kind of been saying this for the past few years. Madden has a unique style and a lot of people don't like it but this is the style of Madden they're I don't think they're ever going to go fully like more to that physics side of things because they've even kind of talked about this briefly here and there and it seems like that's just not the the look and the style that they like they like animations guiding you into things and us as the community we I think tend to disagree we would rather more physics based stuff it's a disconnect it's there their philosophy is more animation driven even though it's what we're saying we want less of they do more of it so that I feel like that's just like if you're expecting Madden to go away from that I don't think they're gonna go away from that it just doesn't seem very likely but however if we're talking about what we have the running is definitely smoother they definitely made it a little bit faster it's not as sluggish as 21 the acceleration is noticeably better the movement is noticeably smoother it's there but it's still very very similar it's still that same style from 21 it's still much slower than what you got with like the current gen version of the game same with the user defender right yes they made the user defender are slightly better than it was for 21 next gen because it's a little smoother and there's a little more acceleration but the user defender is as you know nerfed as it's ever been which I don't have a problem with that because I don't think it's realistic for a user to be able to stop so quickly change direction and be able to run all over the field as easily as they have been however that kind of goes into the next thing is that the coverages are still pretty bad in my opinion and this has just been an area that EA has struggled with with Madden zones not playing how they're supposed to and the thing that was good about a user defender that was unrealistic is it allowed you to cover up for the bad AI now you can't really do that the user defender can only kind of stay in his little area kind of has to hold his ground but the deep zones aren't playing good the deep halves for cover two play terrible the deep thirds for cover three while they're better about not letting stuff easily get over the top of them they're not as good at the stuff underneath them or on the sideline so you can still roll out and hit corners very easily and remember how I said the QB scramble is better this year so rolling out hitting corner routes is definitely going to still be a thing 
thing this year because of how those zones play now again could they tighten this up before the game comes out absolutely but we just know from the past zones are typically one of two ways they're either too good or they're not good enough they very rarely do they have a good balance with the zones and all it takes is one tweak to make it go one way or the other too far in either direction so yes there's going to be tweaks and there's going to be things they touch up on before the actual game releases but there's really no reason to think that all of the stuff we've been playing for the last week is going to be much different than what we get minus maybe some obvious bugs being fixed but if zones are having issues it's hard for me to see zones not having issues when the game is released i'll also say like stuff like block shedding from the pass rush seems crazy overpowered at least from what i've played double team blocks still don't work they actually seem worse than ever like players are splitting double teams super fast and this is just again an area of the game where blocking is something they focus on every year but it doesn't ever seem to get too much better they're definitely have been years where it's improved but it's not saying much because it's improving from a state that's just so bad already that even that minimal improvement doesn't make that much of a difference a lot of times the double team blocking has been broken since forever these players are splitting double teams better than they're than they're getting off of a one-on-one -on -one block it definitely still feels like a year where players are going to drop a lot of people back in coverage because the zones themselves aren't that good but if you drop the underneath zones and you use your zone drop adjustments you can kind of help cover some of that stuff up and if you only send two rushers and they're splitting double teams pretty easily and getting block sheds easily that's how you're going to play defense because something has to work on defense if the zones are not going to be good if man coverage is going to be mediocre at best and if the user defender is not going to be able to move all over the field well then something about the pass rush has to be good otherwise you're just moving the ball at will and that's not a good game something about defense has to work at least good even if it means it's being overpowered because it's got to cover up for the other things obviously we would like balance here but we know that that's just an area that ea is going to always struggle with so i think it's going to be another year of a lot of people in coverage sending two or three people and letting the block sheds go to work for you i will say that there are some blitzes that work the slot cornerback blitzes on contains are still just as good as ever something that another thing that they just can't seem to fix but again it might be a necessary evil if everything else about the defense is going to be lackluster i will say things like the tackling have definitely improved noticeably but it's still madden right you're still getting suction tackles you're still getting those situations where it feels like once you get close enough to a player the animation is going to override you both in tackling and even you know wide receiver db interaction again that's kind of madden style whether we like it or not that's where they're going and that's where they've been going and while they might make some efforts to make them better clean up the animations you're still getting those suction animations you're definitely still getting instances where those animations are overriding what you maybe want them to do and for some people that's just a make or break and they can't get past it but they definitely added new tackle animations they added a decent amount of new animations as a whole and what i don't understand is why don't they showcase this in the trailer they continue showing the same animations that we've already seen now personally i don't have a problem with the animations that are in the game like if you're going to put animations in the game there's no reason to take them out you want to just keep building and adding more and more and more so that you're not seeing the same ones play out nearly as often but there's no reason to put them in and take them out because that's kind of a waste of time and money and effort just keep building on that animation bank and having more options they definitely added more animations but they didn't really showcase any of them in the trailer they've shown us what we've already seen even though that's the one thing people are watching the gameplay trailer for to see what new animations are there let's see if they're more realistic let's see if they look better and there's definitely instances of cooler better looking smoother animations in the game but the bad ones are still there as well now i will say players are definitely more aware especially on the sideline or like after the play this was a thing in madden 21 next gen of course as well but it definitely seems like it happens more often in 22 and it's been made a little bit better players are constantly helping each other up off the ground they're kind of bracing them when they run out of bounds so they don't just keep running into the wall you know there's a lot of interaction post play and on the sideline with you know players being aware of where each other are and they're able to interact with each other better than in years past so yeah if you play madden 21 next gen you have a pretty good idea already of what madden 22 next gen is slightly better still a lot of the same issues especially with blocking and, and warp and those type of things definitely better in some areas with the movement but very very similar it's still the madden that you've known for a while now in terms of the philosophy and the style of the game now if you want somebody else's take on this who's a much better player than me and can break it down even better go check out my boy civil the link is up on the screen here you can click the video he did his own breakdown going over what he likes and doesn't like about the game so if you want a second opinion of someone that knows the game even better than me from a gameplay standpoint go check out his video i'll also have his link below in the description I'll see you guys next time.